Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. When it comes to online narco gore coming out of Mexico, it said that the very first narco execution video that was filmed in 2005 was the murder of a Loseta member on camera by Edgar Valdez Villarreal, or more commonly known as La Barbie. At the time, La Barbie was working for the Sinaloa cartel, and during the mid-2000s, a bloody turf war ensued between Cartel de Sinaloa and Cartel del Golfo. Primarily, they were battling over the municipality of Nuevo Laredo and the surrounding areas in the state of Tamaulipas. Historically, the state of Tamaulipas has been one of the most strategic in the narco world due to its close proximity to the USA and key drug corridors leading into the land of the free and home of the brave. By the early 2000s, the Gulf Cartel, who at the time were arguably the biggest criminal group in Mexico, controlled Nuevo Laredo. Before their takeover, the state was relatively calm, although was still a hub for drug trafficking. The invasion from the Golfos would turn the city into an eventual war zone, with rival cartels, primarily Cartel de Sinaloa, looking to force their way into the area. They would send hundreds of sicarios, led by La Barbie, to attempt to take over the municipality and the state as a whole. The bloodshed would go on for several years, with Sinaloa gunmen adopting ambush-type tactics, such as hitting Gulf Cartel safe houses and businesses in the dead of night. Though, the Sinaloa Cartel underestimated one thing, the power and capability of Los Etas, who at the time were the armed wing of the Gulf Cartel. The Golfos and Los Etas outnumbered, outgunned, and outskilled their rivals, and eventually would stop the advances of Cartel de Sinaloa. The military training and skills of the Zetas ensured that they would have the area locked down for several years. The war between the Golfos and the Sinaloa Cartel would create a new cartel tactic, the execution video, which was popularised by La Barbie. In fact, some say that he created the very first narco execution video, which he indeed starred in, and was said to be the man who pulled the trigger. Though, that is a case for another day. Such tactics previously were only really seen in war zones and combat environments, such as the war in Iraq, where rebels would frequently execute captives, such as Western journalists on camera, which would create worldwide news and condemnation. Although very young, I still remember the haunting news reports surrounding the capture and execution of Kenneth Bigley, who was a British citizen. Prior to this, the tactic was used both in the First and Second Chechen Wars, which occurred on and off between 1994 and 2009. Chechen rebels would very often execute Russian prisoners of war and film the gruesome murders. They would then leave the videotape, usually on the body of the soldiers, for their comrades to find, in order to strike fear into their enemies' hearts. Examples of such cases include the infamous Dagestan massacre video, where six Russian servicemen were brutally slain on camera. It would go on to become one of the most notorious gore videos online. This propagandized method of execution would then be adopted by various Mexican drug cartels, and they would get even more gruesome as the years passed. Everything from dismemberments, castrations, beheadings, beatings, burning alive, and even cannibalism has been filmed on camera and subsequently uploaded online. 
Following the release of the Lababi video, it would hit mainstream news, even in America, as Lababi sent the tape to a Texas-based newspaper. People were naturally shocked by the event, and the video would then make the rounds online. It's believed that the newspaper themselves were the ones who made the video public. Given the attention that the video garnered, other cartels took note and would then adopt similar tactics. Though, for the next few years, such videos were not released all that frequently, and when they were, primarily, they would be released by the Gulf Cartel and their allies, Los Zetas, as well as the Sinaloa Cartel. Back in the old days, cartels would usually upload such videos on YouTube when the site was still in its infancy and not well moderated. Very often, such graphic content would stay up for several days, garnering thousands of views before eventually being deleted. One of the most prominent examples would be a video uploaded to YouTube in 2007, titled, Do Something For Your Country, Killer Zeta. I have covered the video on my channel previously. The video depicts the execution of an alleged Los Zeta member. He has been branded with the letter Z and has various text written on his body in black marker including names of then prominent Zeta members, such as Heriberto Lascano. The man is beaten and interrogated, then subsequently executed by being strangled with a garrote and then being beheaded. The video was released by Cartel de Sinaloa. Drug cartels would also use Facebook at this time to upload graphic content. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, a new phenomenon would also occur online, that being the birth of uncensored narco news sites such as Blog del Narco and Borderland Beat, websites that would document the goings-on in the narco world. Such websites still operate today. Upon such sites' inception, they were met with controversy and criticisms from various journalists in mainstream media, with some even calling for such sites to be banned due to the raw subject matter. Very often, such sites would upload exclusive footage of graphic executions, which would be levied against them with accusations of showing gratuitous violence for the sake of cheap clicks. Despite their amateur style, the journalists and writers on such sites provided a glimpse into the horrors that is the war on drugs, with no editorialization or biased takes fueled by political ideology, which ironically is what mainstream news is guilty of. Instead of informing us of current events, they merely program us on how to think and lecture us from their ivory towers. Whether it be CNN, Sky, BBC or Fox News, they are merely vehicles of propaganda for the establishment. Independent sites such as Borderland Beat should always be supported, though may need to do a better job of age-restricting graphic content. Regardless, the aforementioned narco news sites grew in popularity in tandem with the war between Cartel del Golfo and Los Zetas, which started in 2010. Graphic crime scene photos displaying sheer savagery, such as flaying, castrations and dismemberments, were released on almost a daily basis, as well as gruesome execution videos that would shock the world due to their sheer depravity. Although execution videos existed online at the time, very few would match the brutality that was conveyed in cartel videos. In fact, such videos would cause so much controversy that terrorist groups such as ISIS would take note and inspiration from the content released by the likes of Los Zetas and the Gulf Cartel. In the late 1990s, 
the Gulf Cartel was in turmoil after the capture of then leader Juan Garcia Abregu by Mexican authorities in 1996. For a few years, the organisation suffered due to internal squabbles in regards to who the future leader would be. Eventually, it was Osiel Cardenas who would take control of the Golfos after killing rival candidates including his close friend, Salvador Gomez Herrera, aka El Chava. This would earn Osiel the nickname, Mata Amigos, or in English, the Friend Killer. Naturally, many were unhappy with the new leadership, which Osiel was all too aware of. Truth be told, Osiel was a paranoid coke addict who feared that he would be taken out by rivals or even internally, as well as by the authorities. Osiel's paranoia led him to recruiting special forces soldiers from the Mexican army to essentially be his own personal bodyguards. The group would be known as the Zetas a name derived from the military radio codes that the members would use while serving for the armed forces. As the years passed, the Zetas would grow in strength and numbers, morphing from being bodyguards for the boss to becoming the armed wing of the Gulf Cartel. The Zetas were vital to the growth of the Gulf Cartel in the early 2000s, by securing new drug routes and territories. They would move into new areas and purge the existing traffickers to control the territory. Osiel Cardenas would be arrested in 2003, which ultimately didn't change much in regards to the relationship between the Golfos and the Zetas. Business was booming, and Osiel managed to control the Zetas from his prison cell in Mexico. However, things would start to change in 2007 when Osiel was extradited to the USA. He no longer had control over the Golfos, but more importantly, the Zetas. The next three years would be reminiscent of the late 90s, with uncertainty at the top of the organisation, with numerous individuals looking to take control of the group. Due to the success of the Zetas, they wanted Heriberto Lascano to take complete control of the organisation. However, senior Golfo members preferred either Jorge Eduardo Costilla Sanchez or Antonio Cardenas, the brother of Osiel, to take control of the organisation. Eventually, Jorge would take control of the Golfos. Another sticking point in the relationship was the decision taken by senior Golfo members to call a truce with long-term rivals Cartel de Sinaloa, which Los Zetas refused to recognise, preferring an alliance with the Beltran Labour organisation who at the time, recently split from the Sinaloa cartel. Senior Zeta members would argue that they were the reason as to why the Gulf cartel gained so much control and influence in Mexico, hence they should take control of the organisation. The final nail in the coffin for the relationship between the Zetas and the Golfos would occur in January of 2010, when Zeta member Sergio Peña Mendoza, better known as El Concord, was murdered under the orders of Gulf Cartel Lieutenant Samuel Flores Borrego, aka Metro 3. The hit was conducted due to a disagreement over the drug corridor of Reynosa, whom both protected. El Concord was a highly influential Zeta member who was a close friend of the high-ranking Miguel Trevino Morales, Z40. The murder of El Concord angered the Zeta leaders, in particular Trevino Morales, who gave the Golfo leaders an ultimatum, hand over the killers of El Concord or suffer the consequences. He gave them a deadline of January 25th, and when his demands were not met, he then sent a group of Zeta Sicarios to the municipality of Miguel Alman, where they kidnapped 
brutally tortured and murdered 16 Gulf Cartel Sicarios. This would kickstart the long and gruesome war between both organisations. Every other week, it seemed that a new torture or execution video would be released, each time attempting to outdo each other and get their message across. Ultimately, the war between the two criminal groups would destroy them both. Although many would say the Gulf Cartel technically won, they would no longer hold the same type of influence after the war. As of right now, the Gulf Cartel are not a united organisation. Various splinter groups, such as Los Ciclones, Grupo Sombra, Los Talibanes, as well as others, are doing their own thing, and very often, fighting amongst themselves. Though, it has to be said, the future of the Gulf Cartel could change in August 2024, when former leader Osiel Cardenas is scheduled to be released from prison. It is possible that Osiel reunites the Gulf Cartel and once again makes them a force in the narco world. Time will tell, though let's hope not. As for the Zetas, they would suffer a similar fate. After the capture and killings of high-ranking leaders, the organisation would dissolve into splinter groups, most notably Cartel del Noreste, who are the biggest faction spawned from the collapse of the Zetas. The other notable group would be Zetas Vieja Escuela, or the Old School Zetas. For those who have been following this channel, for any length of time, I have covered various graphic videos from the Zeta Golfo conflict. Though, one of the most well-known videos was the murder of five Zeta members committed by the Gulf Cartel. The savage nature of the video would attract mainstream media attention, with US news sites such as ABC covering the murders and the topic of filmed executions. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? It is unclear to when the video was actually filmed, but was released on the 28th of June 2012 and published on a narco news blog, mundonarco.com. According to mundonarco.com, the video was shot in Rio Bravo in Mexico on the US border, just south of McAllen, Texas, in the state of Tamaulipas. The grainy three minute video depicts five shirtless men on their knees, with their hands tied behind their backs, and their chests painted with large black Zs, surrounded by at least four masked members of the Gulf Cartel, who are wielding machetes and assault rifles. Each Zeta prisoner states his name for the camera at the request of an unidentified voice behind the camera. The interrogator asks who sent them, and they confirm that Zeta Corenta Z40 sent them, Miguel Trevino Morales. At the end of the interrogation, the man behind the camera states, you find yourselves here because you came to fuck us. Pay attention, men. The brutality then ensues. The Sicarios, standing behind the captives, then slit their throats with knives and machetes. Very often, the video is referred to as synchronised beheadings, as three of the five men have their throats slit simultaneously. The two other men are presumed to have been executed off-camera. One of the men, who was executed off-camera, actually tries to get away, but due to his hands being restrained, he is apprehended off-camera, as heard by his struggles. The other man, who was also killed off-camera, watches on as his comrades are having their throats slit. The groans and grunts echo in the barn-type structure where the captives were being held. Although very grainy, you see the agonising expressions of pain on their faces 
as one pleads for his life. Blood leaks down the men's chest as they desperately try to struggle, though second by second you see the fight leave their body as they start to lose strength and eventually pass out. Once passed out, the Sicarios continue to slice away, with one hacking with a large machete. Upon closer viewing, one of the Sicarios is actually using a yellow hacksaw, which creates a horrible grinding type noise as the blade cuts into the spinal cord. Two of the bloody heads are then held up to the camera, with the interrogator exclaiming, very good, very good. The third victim is still being beheaded as the video ends. Again, it is presumed that the other two men were executed off camera. Watching the video closely, it appears that they make one of the captives watch his friends get beheaded. Something is said to him by one of the Sicarios, which prompts him to take a look at what is happening to his colleague, though he quickly looks away in shock and fear, as indicated in his frantic mannerisms and movement. He is all too aware that his gruesome fate has been sealed. It's a disturbing video, to say the least. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. When it comes to videos surrounding the war between Los Etas and the Gulf Cartel, this more than likely will be the last one. At this point in time, I have covered the most well-known videos surrounding the conflict. There was one more in which I wanted to cover, which is incredibly graphic. However, however, I can no longer find the video. If I find it, I will cover it, but more than likely, it's been lost to time. But anyway, thank you for the support. I know this uh, video goes over old ground in regards to Los Etas and the Gulf Cartel. Uh, quite frankly, as I'm recording this, I feel pretty rubbish, don't feel all that well, uh, got a really dry throat, so I felt I would do something simple this week. But regardless, uh, thank you for the support, it's much appreciated. If you guys could do me a massive favour, hit the like obviously, that would be much appreciated, but if you could, smash the notification button near the subscription button. Uh, I've had a few people tell me that my videos haven't been going out in the last few months, so I figured I'd ask you guys to hit the notification button. If you guys would like, uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, link will be in the pinned comment. Also feel free to follow me on Twitch, we stream every Friday after the video premieres, so if more of you guys would drop by, that would be much appreciated. And lastly, I am attempting to create more bonus videos, but for the bonus videos, I want to cover different disturbing topics, not necessarily related to gore, just to do something a little bit different. So, if you guys have any ideas, please feel free to hit me up. I have a few in mind myself, so stay tuned. But anyway, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.